If you want a whole new way to see strawberry shortcake, this is the right recipe for you. For several months now, I've um, kind of in the back of my mind have been bouncing around this recipe and I wanted to get it out there. I wanted to do a strawberry shortcake recipe that's, that's not your typical strawberry shortcake. I'm sick of the strawberry shortcakes that you see these days. It's, it's usually this pre-manufactured sponge cake with a dimple in the top of it for you to put some strawberries in and top with some whipped cream. That's really boring. So sticking to that, I'm going to build on it. Now before we get into that, I want to talk about shortcake. What is shortcake? Is that a cake that's just shorter than other cakes? No, shortcake is actually a thing. It's actually a recipe. Shortcake is where you take a biscuit dough and basically sweeten it up, okay, and then cook that up. And so the texture's different. It's more like a biscuit. Well, that has kind of been lost over the years, and you don't see it done very much. And I really didn't want to do this one that way. I wanted to produce more of that sponge cake-like quality. But frankly, I'm tired of vanilla. It's just, well, it's, it's vanilla. All right, so we're going to go chocolate on this one. It's going to be a chocolate strawberry shortcake, and it's going to have a very special topping. It's not just plain whipped cream. We're going to do a whipped cream that's seasoned to taste. Just the right amount of sugar and just a little bit of flavoring. The flavoring you use is up to you. It can be anything. It could be rum, bourbon, tequila. Oh, oh. how about just plain old extract? You could do a peppermint. That would be Christmassy, wouldn't it? You could, let's see here, you could do vanilla, you could hazelnut, you could any flavor extract you want. So how you make your whipped cream toppings up to you, you decide. Today, mine's gonna be a bourbon cream. I've done it this way before and it's delicious when you put strawberries with this. Folks, this is going to be a chocolate strawberry shortcake with a bourbon cream topping and it's absolutely fantastic. So let's get in the kitchen. I'm going to show you how to make this wonderful delicious recipe. Come on. Now folks to make the cake portion of our special sh uh, strawberry shortcake that's two cups of flour to one cup of milk and six tablespoons of cocoa, one and a half cups of sugar, two eggs, one teaspoon of soda, one teaspoon baking powder, and one quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And the butter over there, as you see, that's one and a half sticks of butter, which is the same as three quarters of a cup. We're gonna melt that butter. Very simple, basic chocolate cake recipe. And if you're looking for a recipe that you can kind of shape and mold and turn into something really special, folks, use this recipe. You can add a little cinnamon to it or a little bit of allspice and totally change it. You can add in some vanilla extract. You can add in all kinds of extra things and change this up in multiple different ways and the recipe still works good. So enjoy this one and use it as a good base recipe for chocolate cake that you can change and shape into whatever you want. So when it comes to baking up our cake, I have chosen for mine to use these little souffle ramekins. These things are really cool. You can bake all kinds of stuff in them. And I started thinking, hey, strawberry shortcake, that's right about the right size. And if I did this, it would give me a perfect shape. And that's what I decided. You don't have to use these. You could use a sheet cake. You can cut your cake however you want it. I just wanted to throw this idea at you. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I want to make sure I grease and flour each one of these. So I'm going to put shortening in it and flour each one out, and that way I don't have any of my cake sticking. I need to get my ramekins greased and floured. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little shortening. I'm going to take that and just gently rub it over the inside of this. And you don't have to use, see how much I got there? You don't have to use all that. You need a very thin coat, okay? Nothing more. And that, mixed with a little flour, is a perfect release 
when it comes to your cake. So you don't have to worry about this being non-stick or anything. This makes it non-stick. And if you're wondering, does that spray coating work as well? I don't know, I've never used it. I've always just done this, all right? So anyway, we put a little flour in here. And if you notice, I have a pan here. That's to catch the flour I'm not gonna use. So if any of it comes out, it's not a mess, okay? So I take my flour, work it around inside my ramekin, tap it off, okay? And what sticks on the inside is what I need. Any extra, I don't. And I think there's a little bit too much right here. There we go, see it came out now. So an extra tap. Do each of your ramekins the same way or any other dish that you're gonna be using for this, okay? I'm just gonna get all of these greased, floured. Once that's done, I'm ready to make my cake. And this is something I've always in the past made a, a habit of making sure this was done in advance. And that is quite on purpose, folks. You want to not be in a rush to do things in the kitchen when you're baking or cooking. And if I do this in advance of making my cake, then all I have to do when I'm done making the cake is pour it directly into this. There's no waiting, there's no anything going wrong. It just comes out right, okay? Folks, this being a very basic and simple recipe using the melted butter is so very easy. It's as simple as doing a, a boxed mix for making a cake. So all we have to do is I've got my flour there in a sifter. Put all of your dry ingredients in there, your, your soda, your, your baking powder, salt in there, then the sugar and, and the uh, cocoa. And as you're sifting, it all gets sifted together, then mix in your wet ingredients. You can just mix that with a whisk. And as soon as it's all wet, it's ready to go into the cups, okay? Um, this is as basic as, I, as any cake recipe I have. And I sure hope that y'all try this and experiment with it. And remember, you can take the cocoa out and turn it into anything else. If you'll notice, I have my flour in this little thing. This is called a sifter. Now, sifters are really neat because they combine your ingredients. So I'm going to put my baking soda, baking powder, and salt, and any dry ingredients in this. I would like to mention that this does also do a few other things. If you've got lumps in any of your ingredients, this is going to remove those lumps for you. It's also going to combine these items and it's going to, well, aerate the flour a little bit. And that's something that you want because it gives you a better structure to your cake. Now, this is a good example. I've got little lumps of uh, cocoa in this that I wouldn't have wanted in my cake and that has separated that out and kept me from making someone's day bad okay and something I would like to mention at this point you know you look in this bowl you see what's right here what I have created here is the same thing that you buy in a box when you go to the store you spend what three four dollars you buy this box mix for a cake and then you've basically got this 50 cents worth of ingredients, if, if that much, that is that right there. So I don't see why you don't just do your own and get rid of the box, okay? This, all we have to do now, get my eggs and my milk and my butter in here and go to mixing it. That's pretty easy, isn't it? There you have it. Homemade chocolate cake. All I can say is take your whisk and make sure you cover the entirety of the bottom of the bowl so you don't have any ingredient left down there that is not mixed in. Now, something I would like to mention at this point, you know, don't let the kids lick 
the whisk or anything else. Remember, there's raw egg in this, and unless you're just really confident about the freshness of those eggs, that could be a dangerous thing. Never feed raw egg to anybody, okay? Now I'm gonna take a rubber spatula and go over the outside of that bowl one more time, making sure that I have this all ready. Now, I added just a little more water, not much, just a tiny bit, uh, a couple of tablespoons, just enough to get my viscosity to flow just a little more like this. And I did it because of the size of these cups. I'm trying it this way, and so you'll know. This is one of those recipe development moments. Hey, we're just doing it together, okay? So now, I have to get that from there into these cups. I think I'm going to use a ladle for that. And I'm not necessarily looking for these things to fill the entire ramekin cup, but I do want a decent size cake. Oop, that one looks a little more full, and I've got a mess on my edge. Of course, this is one of the reasons we keep these rubber spatulas and use them. It allows us to get right down to the bottom of things, okay? All right, there we have them. All right, these are gonna have to cook in the oven 350 degrees and I have that preheated now I want to let you know something I cleaned my dishes in the amount of time it took for me to preheat this oven and that gave these a little bit of time to rise a little bit from that double acting baking powder remember first action is when it's mixed second is when it goes in the oven all right so 350 degrees it should take about 25 minutes maybe up to 30 I'll know those are ready when a toothpick inserted in the middle comes out clean. Folks, look at these beautiful cakes. They are out of the oven now. It was actually 35 minutes of cooking. And uh, I say that because it's, um, you know, when I checked these at 25 minutes, my toothpick came out and it was soaking wet with batter. And I knew, wow, not 25, must be 35. So I put them back in the oven finished cooking them up, the toothpick comes out clean now, and these are absolutely gorgeous. Exactly what I was wanting for my strawberry shortcake. Now when you take these out of these ramekins, you're gonna notice that there's a little bit of that flour on the outside of the cake. Don't worry about that, it's not gonna hurt anything, and it's not gonna ruin our dish in any way. This is gonna come out beautiful. Don't touch these, just leave them alone. When they are cool enough to touch by hand, and you know I mean cool they can be slightly warm and they have shrunk then they're ready to come out until then just leave them alone and it should be a, about I don't know I'm gonna guess an hour and a half maybe two hours to cool well and I'm going to change them over to a rack and then I'll start making my toppings okay at the moment I have my cakes that have been removed from their dishes now something I want to mention if you have trouble removing cakes from those dishes, just run a table knife around the outside edge of the cake in between it and the dish, and usually it'll free it up. You'll feel it start turning on you. These, what I wanna do is I wanna fix them in a very special way, and I'm looking for berries that are of similar size to start with. You don't have to be perfect, but you know what? If you're trying to plate up something real pretty, you might as well do your best to bring forth a little continuity, right? Now right now I'm just decrowning them. As you can see, all I do, I'll take my knife in hand, hold it steady, and I put the berry on there, and I just rotate it with the other hand. And that way it's a very steady, easy, and fairly safe cut. See there? And that nice? So... This won't take but a moment. Now, next thing is my berries. The way I'm gonna slice these things up. I want a center slice and two side slices. So one here, one over here, and one down the middle. 
Now what this is going to give me is this is these pieces are for plate decoration. Those are my outside pieces. My inside pieces are for the cake itself. And that's the way I'm treating it. There we go. Just that simple. Now folks, I've just poured up my cream. Hold it, let me start again. No, now folks. I've just finished pouring up my cream and I wait till the very last moment before I do that. And that's important. When you're gonna whip cream, you want it to be as cold as absolutely possible. I'm gonna let that sit for a minute and pour out what's left. I'm gonna put some of my sugar in here and I've got a couple of tablespoons of sugar. In fact, if you want, you can put it all in early. Now I'm gonna start this mixing and I'm not gonna put it on high. We're gonna keep it on a lower speed and we're just gonna start working it until it froths a little bit. Now, when this happens, you gain a lot of volume. Now, if you're doing this by hand, just whisk from side to side. But if you're like me and you're fortunate enough to have a machine, let the machine do the work, folks. There's no sense in doing it yourself. Okay, now we take another look at it and we see we're building sort of a frothy state. It's risen up a little bit. We're gonna gain even more volume as we work more air into it and it gets stiffer. However, right now, this is a good time after the sugar's been worked in well. Put a spoon in there, take out just a little bit. See how much it's thickened? Look at that. Now this is a good time to taste it and see if you want more sugar or not. Mmm. For my taste, that's perfect. Lightly sweetened. Now in just a moment, I'm going to speed it up and that will speed up this process. Okay, it's only been about another 30 seconds. You see the lines that are forming from the whisk? Now I'm gonna speed it up a little. This happens quick from this point. Now folks, this is getting close to finished. When it gets to where it's almost soft peak, where it's at now, I take my spatula, run it around the edge of the bowl, to make sure there is no cream that has been missed. There we go. Now, at this point, I can go ahead and start working in that bourbon. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Very gently, let it drizzle down in there. Don't use much at a time. Now, you see how much more sticks inside of the whisk? That tells us how far along we are and where we are, okay? Once again, break it free from the side of the bowl. One quick spin, not much, just a quick spin. And it's finished. There we go. Our cream is ready. Now we need to work it out of this. See there? There we go, it's coming out. There we are. Ha ha. Ha ha. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, there's your bourbon cream. Mm. Oh, totally delicious. Now the amount of ingredients that we used in making our chocolate cake, and, and I'll tell you what, before I even go there, let me stop and back up a little bit. We're gonna talk about, talk about that whipped topping. Our whipped topping was simple enough. We started with a cup of cream and I worked in just enough sugar until it tasted right to me. And that was a couple of tablespoons. It was quite simple. And then on the flavoring, depending on what you want, let's say you want peppermint. Well, if I was gonna put peppermint to one cup, I would use a quarter of a teaspoon 
to maybe a half depending and it's going to be very strong so remember extracts are strong if you're using something like a, a liquor you can't use too much because the alcohol will break it down and you have to add it late so on the uh, other like mine which is the bourbon I like to use one to two tablespoons of bourbon and that's after it starts building some structure to your whipped topping now for that ingredient quantity on the rest here we have two cups of flour is what we started with for our cake one cup of milk for the cake one and a half cups of sugar six tablespoons of cocoa two eggs one teaspoon of soda that's baking soda one teaspoon baking powder and one quarter of a teaspoon of salt the butter that's one and a half sticks of butter or if you're going to go measurement on it that would be one uh, excuse me three quarters of a cup I'm sorry three quarters of a cup of butter and we melt that butter before making that cake it's really simple an easy cake to make it comes out delicious and it's fun now on the strawberries as many as you want to use just slice them up so they look nice and they're easy to eat you don't want people to have to fight their way through your strawberry shortcake I think it's time to get this assembled I need to take one of these let's just pick one out that one there okay take my knife remember always cutting away from you you can rotate it Now, it's the bottom half I want to start with. Let's get a plate up here. I want that right smack in the middle of that plate. Now, I have a gorgeous, gorgeous piece of cake here. Oh, yeah. Can you say just totally delicious treat right here now these as I mentioned before I want them for my plate and I want the top where I cut the the stem off I want it facing up toward the cake that way it tapers away from it on each one you may be saying, hey, that's just a little bit too picky, but you know what? Here's the real truth, folks. We eat with our eyes, and when it comes to a dish like this, where you have plenty of time to work with it, goodness, why not? Why not make it something special? Even if it's just for yourself, give yourself a treat. Why not? It's all good, <laughs> okay? So just go with it. This one here, and I think one more. Oh yeah, there we go. Now we're off to a good start. This, I believe, needs a little bit of cream on top. And I don't think I should be any too mild about it. I also believe it needs its namesake, strawberry shortcake right on top. Next, this, not on top, right off to the side, just like so. Beautiful, huh? Strawberry shortcake. <laughs> That's the way it should be done. That's what I call strawberry shortcake. Now, folks, <laughs> tastes that just go together. Mm -hmm. mm. You serve this up, I guarantee you, you're going to be wowing some of your friends. This, this is a good one. <laughs> thank you for watching this. Thank you for indulging me once again, folks. Thank you very much for spending your time with Texas Cooking today. Please take a look at my channel. There's a lot more there. Also, it's that description box down there. I say it every time, don't I? Take a look at the links there. Click on those links. One's to my channel, one's to another channel, and I have a link there to my website, which is 
satrotter.com and that's S.A. Trotter Arts is my company and that's the company that does Texas Cooking Today. All right, so thank you for watching. Please enjoy. Please enjoy your dessert. I'll enjoy mine and have a good day. Bye-bye.